everybody and welcome to today's Sunday Scrum. It's just wonderful to have you special people with us and I hope that from wherever you're zooming in, you're going to enjoy this time. My name is Rob and it's just great to have you with us. I uh, wanted to share two points today. The one important one has to do with our shoebox initiative, which has to do with giving a Christmas shoebox of goodies to the children of Taste and See individuals. And so if you do have a little bit of extra money in your kitty towards that, I would ask that you consider giving 150 Rand or more. And uh, if you could reference a shoebox on the new gen bank account, uh, we'd really, really appreciate that. I'm sure as we're all gearing up towards year end and considering our loved ones, this is an opportunity to consider those less fortunate. So that's the first item. And the second one is our Together Sunday is around the corner, 12th of December. We'll be getting together again in the auditorium at the refinery. And prior to that, we'll be getting together on the 7th, Tuesday the 7th for prayer, followed by the Together Sunday on the 12th and followed again on the following Tuesday by a night of prayer and praise. And given that that uh, is essentially our December gathering moment, I want to really encourage you to take part in all of that. Nearer the time, we'll be sending out the link so that you can sign up for it, but it will be a very, very precious time. Aren't you finding that the year is just running ragged? Um, it's almost like we're in December and you wonder what's happened, but for some as well, it's also the fact that the year has been long and that we're taking a bit of flack and uh, looking forward to that break, hopefully. At a time like this, my hope goes out to uh, all, of the, all of the retailers and all the folk that are having to work the long hours over the Christmas and holiday period. And so be considerate to them too as you go shopping and as you try to do the nice things, having been through Black Friday and all of its excitement, it's about how we treat people, isn't it? And so, yeah, enough on that. Our uh, Sunday Scrum will include a time for kids after I've chatted, a time for us to worship, and a time for us to hear from Josh about what he would like to share in the message. And hopefully you'll be following that up with time together afterwards, or be it communion, or time to just gather in your fellowship groups or as a family. And so I really, really pray that this is going to be a blessed time. And with that in mind, shall we pray? Father, thank you. Thank you for this amazing day. Thank you for the rain that we've had. Thank you for the dams that are full. Thank you for drought areas that are being blessed with more and more water. Father, we, we just thank you. We thank you for your incredible goodness. We thank you for your amazing provision. We thank you that although the year has been long and we've been through what we think are tough times, you are constantly with us and you are ever present. And so we invite you, Holy Spirit, into this place right now that you would be present with us as we sing praises, as we offer up prayer, and as we gather as your people, please be with us. And we ask that all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Enjoy today. The Singer Wherever Jesus went, lots of people went too. They loved being near him. Old people, young people, all kinds of people came to see Jesus. Sick people, well people, happy people, sad people, huh, and worried people. Lots of them worrying about lots of things. What if we don't have enough food or clothes? Or suppose we run out of money. What if there isn't enough and everything goes wrong and we won't be all right? What then? When Jesus saw all the people, his heart was filled with love for them. They were like a little flock of sheep that didn't have a shepherd to take care of them. So Jesus sat them all down and he talked to them. The people sat quietly on the grassy mountainside and listened. From where they sat, they could see the blue lake glittering below them and little fishing boats coming in from a night's catch. The spring air was fresh and clear. See those birds over there, Jesus said. Everyone looked. Little sparrows were pecking at seeds along the stony path. Where did they get their food? Hmm? Perhaps they have pantries all stocked up? Cabinets full of food? Everyone laughed. Who's ever seen a bird with a bag of groceries? No, Jesus said. 
They don't need to worry about that because God knows what they need and he feeds them. And what about these wild flowers? Everyone looked. All around them flowers were growing. Anemones, daisies and pure white lilies. Where do they get their lovely clothes? Do they make them? Or do they go to work every day so they can buy them? Or do they have closets full of clothes? Everyone laughed again. Who's ever seen a flower putting on a dress? No, Jesus said. They don't need to worry about that because God clothes them in royal robes of splendor. Not even a king is that well-dressed. Well, they had never met a king. But as they gazed out over the lake, glittering and sparkling below them, the hillsides dressed in reds, purples and golds, they felt a great burden lift from their hearts. They couldn't imagine anything more beautiful. Little flock, Jesus said, you are more important than birds, more important than flowers. The birds and the flowers don't sit and worry about things. And God doesn't want his children to worry either. God loves to look after the birds and the flowers, and he loves to look after you too. Jesus knew that God would always love and watch over the world he had made, everything in it, birds, flowers, trees, animals, everything, and most of all, his children. Even though people had forgotten, the birds and the flowers hadn't forgotten, they still knew their song. It was the song all of God's creation had sung to him from the very beginning. It was the song people's hearts were made to sing. God made us. He loves us. He is very pleased with us. It was why Jesus had come into the world, to sing them that wonderful song, to sing it not only with his voice, but with his whole life, so that God's children could remember it and join in and sing it too.
turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside the sound of angels are the sound
la 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 Break it. 
everyone. I hope you're all doing so well wherever you are tuning in from today. Uh, my name is Josh Kricher. Uh, I'm on staff here at NewGen with a focus on uh, high school ministry, youth ministry. I've got a pretty amazing job. Uh, I'm married to the really lovely, beautiful, amazing Helena Kricher. Um, and we have the privilege of raising three small gifts from Jesus, uh, Dustin, Jude, and Caleb. And so this week has been a pretty hectic week uh, in the life of the world, but also in many of your individual and personal lives. And so I'm just thinking of some, I mean, there's lots of crazy stuff that's happened in the news this week, but I think one, one that's front of mind for me is, is this new um, Omicron, Omicron COVID variant, Southern African variant, and uh, uh, all sorts of countries locking borders, uh, specifically from Southern Africa. And it's affected uh, us personally with family meant to be coming down in December. And so it just feels like, are you serious? Like, again, we are going through this again. I'm so sick and tired of it. I don't know about you, but I'm so sick and tired of this. Um, and it really uh, it really sucks, to be honest. And so this morning's message, um, this morning's message is really around, um, around reminding us of an important truth amidst everything that's going on, amidst the craziness of the world, amidst the craziness of our personal circumstances and situations. Uh, I want to remind us of, of something so relevant, so important, and so it's titled The Most Important Thing. So before we continue, if you just allow me to pray for a moment. Father, thank you for your incredible love for us. We love you so much and are so grateful for all that you've done, for your perfect uh, nature and characteristics, for how you love us so, um, so much. To, to the ends of the earth, God, unto death you love us. And so we just want to, we just want to say thank you for, uh, for our salvation. Thank you for our right standing with you. Thank you that we can sit or stand or whatever, wherever we are as your sons and your daughters. Um, we just want to welcome you to be with us and to speak to us and to minister to us and to change us into your likeness as we sit under your word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would really do a deep work, that you would use these words and that you would, uh, by your spirit, come and bring conviction and change in the hearts of many. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, um, I suppose, there's lots of different ways of looking at it, but let's look at it uh, in, its, in terms of priorities. Everyone's got priorities. Um, everyone has a hierarchy of priorities, and, and this hierarchy might change throughout the day, or between morning and evening, or from moment to moment, or whether it's a weekday or a weekend. Um, uh, this is normal. Life is a constant calculation of many micro decisions throughout the day. What am I going to kind of prioritize in this moment? What am I uh, saying no to in order to say yes to that? We're doing this a thousand times uh, every day. Um, what is worth my time? What should I give myself to? So if I don't eat right now, I might get more work done, but my blood sugar is probably going to drop and I'm probably going to get quite slow and tired and my uh, efficiency and productivity will actually drop so because of that it might actually be worth just stopping for a minute to to take a snack and uh, uh, and get the blood sugar up a little bit and, and stay focused for the rest of the day so maybe it makes a little bit more sense to stop and do that um, if I don't choose to do the di if I sorry if I choose to do the dishes right now I'll probably have a bit of a later night than I would have liked and I really like my sleep probably talk about this a bit more later but I really like my sleep and I really like my rest maybe it's indicative of my season of life but I also know that my wife really appreciates it to wake up and there's clean dishes because it just makes her day so much easier and so I know I'm gonna, there's going to be a more pleasant morning all around if I do do the dishes so now I'm weighing up what, what do I prioritize this value of rest and sleep or the value of uh, a, a happier morning <laughs> and so Depending, I suppose, depending on, on how tired I am in that moment is going to uh, be the, the, the deciding factor. Um, if, I, if I decide to watch the, the, the late game of footy out at the pub, um, it's going to be really good on a lot of levels. It's going to maybe fill some of my friendship tanks that people I haven't got to hang out with and watch footy with. In fact, I, I love going to the pub as well because it's a space where I'm not surrounded by Christians and that's so refreshing for me. It's a, it's a space where I'm actually engaging with uh, people who are not saved and that's really lack of because I work in a church environment and, oh, these Christians. No, I'm just joking. Uh, but it's just really refreshing to be around those who are not believers. Um, and so, and so um, I suppose depending on my work week, depending on how tomorrow looks the next day, uh, depending on my friendship kind of my friendship level tank levels 
Um, those will be the deciding factors around what I do there. And so on we can go. We're constantly prioritizing one thing over another, making decisions based on, uh, on kind of priorities in the moment. I mean, all the time. There's thousands of these micro decisions every day. And for every decision, we need to weigh up what's best. And best means different things in different moments. What's best for me? What's best for those around me? What's best for the environment? What's best for the kingdom of God? What's best kind of uh, all things considered? Now, if you're a parent with small children, this goes to another level because, <laughs> because you're faced with many of these micro decisions that actually require a physical answer. It's not like just things you can process in your head. You actually need to answer, uh, you need to process and answer your child. And so I came across this pretty amusing account by a lady called uh, Emma Maris. And she took a day to note down every single question two of her kids asked her during that day. And now, I by no means am going to go through all of them because I do not, uh, I do not have the, uh, the capacity to go through it. I'm probably going to mention not even half of them, but we're going to be bombarded with questions. And you're going to see that with every question, there is processing that needs, needs to have happened. Uh, and obviously it's a bit funny because it's kids and all that, but this processing needs to happen and the answer that needs to be given. So are you ready? Take a deep breath. Here we go. Here's an account from, uh, from Emma Maris. In the morning. Can I play on your phone until you wake up? I mean, this first one is brutal. You're not even awake and you've got to make decisions around screen time. Hectic. <laughs> Can I play on your phone until you wake up? Can we have breakfast now? Can we have waffles? Can I use my own money to buy candy and ice cream at the corner store when we go buy eggs to make waffles? Will you help me count my money? Can we have chocolate chips and the waffles? Can I mix it? Can I measure the baking powder? Can I mix it now? It's my turn. And we'll skip through a whole bunch a bit later in the day. Will you play Quirkle with us? Will you play this flower card game with us? Can we play the dice game afterwards? Which of the games should we play with the flower cards? Can you help me fl figure out how this flower rummy game is played? Can you, explain it? can you explain it to me? Can I have one of your cards? Can we play a different card game? Can we go back to the corner store and buy more candy? Which card should I play? Can we play one more game? Can we play Old Maid? Skip forward to a different situation in the day. Will you tell us who you're texting? Can I text your friend Sarah? Can I also text her? I can't really read or write, but I can send emojis. Can I please play on your phone? Can we have lunch now? Can we have ice cream for lunch? Can we have kale with lemon parmesan dressing? Will you give me a glass of water? Will you play 20 questions with us while we are eating? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Later, skip past a whole bunch of questions. Later on a walk. Will you hold my bow? Can I have my bow back? Will you carry my mittens? Can I have my mittens back? Will you hold my mittens again? Can I have my mittens back again? Will you hold my bow and arrows? Can we go further up the hill? Can we play more with Sarah's kids? Can we stay longer? Can you put my hat on my head since I already put on my mittens? Can you hand me my boots? Can you button my sweater? Can I have my mittens? Skip forward to bedtime. Can I sleep in my jeans? Can I sleep in my skirt and leggings? Do we have to go to bed right now? Can we read another chapter? Can we sleep with you? Can I keep my lights on? What are we going to do tomorrow? <sighs> Honestly, guys, we didn't even—I didn't even go through half the actual questions of this account, and um, and uh, and only and remember these are only accounts of the ones that required verbal answers. So this left out all the questions that kind of she didn't have to answer, um, and so this is just a, uh, an indication of like, yo, we are faced with lots of decision making, lots of putting one thing above the other, kind of prioritizing one thing in a day over something else, saying yes to something, saying no, which is saying no to something else thousands of times uh, every day. And there's internal processing that's happening at the same time. Talk about decision fatigue. It's wild. So I mentioned earlier something that I value, maybe a little bit too much, is rest and sleep. I just love a good dos. Nothing like it. It's a good reset button. Uh, and obviously, uh, overemphasis on sleep has its dangers. But um, depending on the situation, my value of sleep could come second. And so there's a couple years back when I was in the States and um, I came off the back of a long trip. The next day I was going to fly back home to South Africa and I came back to my room at about 10.30 at night uh, in New York City, the place I was staying. And there was, there was still a lot I wanted to see and do in New York City. And so I had to make a decision in that moment. I heard it's a, a city that never sleeps. And so I had some food and... Uh, borrowed, borrowed a, had a friend's uh, kind of unlimited metro card and uh, went out 
and I had an incredibly amazing night. One to remember, one that memories that will stay with me for the rest of my life. And it was a Josh solo uh, New York City mission, and it was amazing. Uh, and looking back, do I regret not sleeping? Obviously not. No, I had an amazing time. And so, and so these things aren't hard and fast rules. They are things that change depending on our situation. And so. Right now, I want us to take a step back, and we've been talking about kind of micro decisions, snap decisions, but I want us to take a step back and talk about, like looking at a grander level, maybe at a macro level, what is the most important thing, kind of in all situations. I'm not asking what should the most important thing be in your life. I'm asking to look uh, at your life and, and, and answer truthfully what is, kind of based on your decisions, what is the most important thing for you. So why don't you pause now, and if you can, if you're up for it, mention what is the most important thing in your life. And if that's maybe a bit of a stretch of a question for you, just answer based on your decisions that you make, what are some very important things in your life? Welcome back. I would love to have heard what some of those priorities were. Won't you just shout them out quick? Okay, nice one. Uh huh. Okay. Okay, that's enough. Pipe down, please. You guys are getting a bit rowdy. Come on. So, so um, yeah, I, I would imagine there were some similarities in priorities, but also there was probably some pretty amusing and fun outliers. Uh, but yeah, I hope it was a good exercise just to kind of look in and see what am I prioritizing in this uh, kind of moment or season in life. And so, in in answering this question, what is the most important thing? I think we need to consider that which makes life possible and that which makes life meaningful and so in a physical sense we can answer off the bat you know it makes life possible food water shelter kind of in terms of meaningful I suppose it's a bit more broad but I, I would I would say human connection and love and so uh, when thinking about the physical needs I'm reminded of how Jesus uh, knowing us so well and knowing just how we are so dependent on our, uh, kind of our flesh and on, the, on, the, on our physical needs he refers to these so often and I know that we've just had a pause. I'm going to ask us to have another one now. So I want us to pause and take our time to, to slowly read through two passages, both from the book of John, one in chapter 6 and one in chapter 4. Um, and just as you read through those passages and you see Jesus uh, referring to kind of our physical needs in a spiritual sense, he speaks around being the bread of life and, 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 live, uh, and, and, and living water. Um, I want you to share in your groups what stood out to you about these passages. So read through them slowly in your groups, uh, out loud. You can do it how you want. You can break out into smaller groups if you want. You can do it in one big group. But I want you to read um, out loud these two passages and discuss kind of what stood out to you about them. We'll see you in a bit. Okay, good. I hope you gave lots of time for discussion there because it's there's so much you could you could go into into those two really beautiful passages of scripture, um, and so in I, I'm gonna kind of just cut to the chase and say in short Jesus is really saying that uh, he is life. It is he that makes life possible, both physically and spiritually. It is Jesus who makes life possible, but not only possible. It is Jesus who makes life meaningful and significant and worth living. Um, and guys, just to say today, my, my message is, is really not rocket science. It's nothing new. Uh, it's nothing sexy. Uh, but it's so important to, to remember. Um, it's really simple. And the message is that Jesus is, Jesus is the most important thing. And now I, I, I completely understand that that is not an appropriate or apt pronoun uh, to, to refer to Jesus. But I think that uh, many of us, for many of us in our hearts and in our lives, maybe he does just take the place of another thing or another element or another aspect to our lives. And um, I want you to hear his voice today and that he is saying he wants to be your everything, not just another thing. He wants to be your everything. He wants to be your heart's desire. Not not so that you can puff him up and that he can have an ego about it, but no, we are... Cr we're going to get into this in a bit, but this is why we, we were created. We were created for a relationship with Him, to love Him, to enjoy Him. This is what you've been made for. So when I say when I, when I say this, like, hey, Jesus needs to be uh, the most important thing. This isn't 
news to you. This isn't a, it's like, Josh, you've dropped this theological bomb. Uh, thank you for opening up my eyes and my mind to this whole new world of truths. I am forever in your gratitude. I understand. It's, it's, a, it's much simpler than that, and it's, it's really not rocket science. But if you're anything like me, sadly what happens is that we get blinded to these obvious truths. Like we all know, theologically speaking, and in our minds, that Jesus needs to be the first and greatest priority in our lives. And I'm speaking to you right now, and I do not have this down. I do not have it waxed. Um, but we know in our heads this truth, but we are blinded. Uh, we are blinded by, there's nearly like a spiritual blindness in, in, in us. And if we don't remind ourselves and renew our minds daily and kind of invite God and, and reflect on Him and look to Him daily, we are so easily blinded and so easily forget. I'm reminded of a pas the passage in Ephesians 6, the, the armor of God passage, um, uh, that, that says uh, and, rem and reminds us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. I'm reminded that this is a spiritual battle. This is not just forgetfulness. This is a spiritual battle that we need to um, come and ask God's help and trust in Him to help us through this and to remove the blindness from our, from our, from our eyes and our spiritual eyes uh, that we may um, understand that there's nothing more important than a life of loving Jesus um, and so life can get so full and so complex and so complicated and uh, there's so many uh, circumstances and challenges that are being thrown at us that that weigh heavy on our hearts and uh, relational dynamics and difficulties and it's so difficult sometimes just to simplify life to like just be with Jesus and just love Jesus and everything from that place will flow everything our witness our our joy our our relationships our uh kind of uh our work and our provision everything comes from a place of just uh, loving jesus uh, and, gl and glorifying him as we love him as those two things go hand in hand which we're speaking to soon and so this dif in the uh, touching on this difficulty to simplify life in 1646, uh, the Westminster Assembly, this was a council of about 120 theologians and politicians, uh, attempted to put down on record exactly what is important. And they produced, amongst other documents, uh, something called the Westminster Catechism. And uh, this is a beautiful document. And if you have time, I'd really encourage you just to go and have a look at it. In fact, I've linked it in the description. Of, or if you go to newgen.co.za, forward slash um, WSC, that's the Westminster Shorter Catechism, uh, you will find this document. And um, it's basically a simplification of the, of the Christian faith um, in 107 questions. And this doesn't sound simplified, but it feels like the first one, which we're going to touch on now, the first one kind of summarizes everything and everything flows from that. And so, um, yeah, just, just if you have the capacity to Go through these questions one at a time and look at the kind of supporting or relating scriptures and it's a deeply enriching experience not to rush through them but even one a day and just allow allow yourself to soak in those um, and to soak in god's word and kind of the truths that come from god's word uh, there so there's a gentleman william beveridge a theologian from the 19th century he said these words near the end of his life he said the older i grow and i now stand upon the brink of eternity the more comes back to me the first sentence in this catechism which I learned when I was a child and the fuller and the deeper its meaning becomes what is the chief end of man to glorify God and to enjoy him forever and so guys this this is really what it's about this is the most important thing to to love God to glorify him and enjoy him forever all these things are not separate things these are all one and the same as we glorify Him, we are enjoying Him. As we enjoying Him, we are glorifying Him. As we are, our hearts are leaning in and we are loving and we are staying committed to Him, we are glorifying Him and we are enjoying Him. These things are, what the, 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 phrase is, the phrase is inextricably linked. These are inextricably linked. You can't genuinely love God without uh, glorifying Him and without enjoying Him. And you can't genuinely um, uh, glorify Him 
without enjoying him and loving him. Do you understand? These things are inextricably linked. And so, what's, what's uh, I suppose what's amusing, to me at least, uh, is up until this point in the message, I haven't actually mentioned the primary scripture which, which, which actually stirred my heart towards sharing the, this message this morning. I mentioned a whole bunch of other scriptures which are all so beautiful and so relevant, but I want to share the, the scripture which actually got me thinking about this message this, uh, or today. It's from uh, Matthew 22, verse 34 to 40, and it reads, uh, sorry, some context there is that uh, Jesus is basically having a day of um, back and forth with the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they're trying to trap him in his words, and are trying to uh, kind of find something to nail him on. And this is after um, he's rebuttaled the Sadducees already. Um, uh, and so here we pick up. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. They gathered together to try trap him, basically. And one of them, a lawyer, the sneakiest amongst them, that's Josh inserted that part, um, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. And these are such beautiful truths. To love God with all our heart, all our soul and all mind. There's a wholeheartedness, a whole souledness and a whole mindedness uh, in which we are to love God. And so just for a moment, I want us to pause and to, and to consider... Um, what does this mean? What can this practically look like for you? What does this mean practically for you? This thing of, that we see in Matthew 22, uh, 22 verse 34 to 40 of loving God with everything and loving our neighbors as ourselves. And then this thing that we find in the Westminster Catechism to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. What does this mean for you? So there really is uh, so much more to be said about these two beautiful pieces of uh, scripture and this beautiful document um, such as how glorify how glorifying God will overflow into enjoying him we talked about them being inextricably linked or how loving God will naturally result in loving others or that they're the one and the same or how all of life all of life not all of life all of life is based off of loving God and I really just want to hone in on this that this is this is where it starts it starts with us and God and from that place everything everything let me repeat everything that is important flows from the place of uh, our relationship with Jesus um, and I know I don't need to mention these things because you're a smart lot and probably in your conversations you would have picked this up already and, and touched on some of these things but uh, but I'm really hoping that these conversations were life-giving and that you began to wrestle with these things and, and ponder how it can work out practically in your lives. This is always what's so important. Hey, we don't just want to be hearers, but also doers of the word. We want the Holy Spirit to come and stir us to conviction, uh, not just to like a, oh, cool, aha, this was like a really light bulb moment, but to a place of, yes, light bulb translates to our hearts, translates to our hands. It's that head, heart, hand. So really trusting that the Holy Spirit is um, in these conversations is stirring you to action and really trusting that this week, you are going to go and uh, kind of uh, follow through and, and uh, allow God's um, aha moments that translate into your heart to actually translate to your hands. And so, guys, this is it. This is what it's all about. This is what's most important. Not anything else. It's loving God. It's enjoying Him. It's glorifying Him. There's, there's nothing more important. Um, this is more important than your financial situation, than your social reputation. It's more important than your children's education, and it's more important than your holiday plans, more important than your cryptocurrency investments, or, or more important than, your, than any relationships with any people you may have. It's more important than your hot take on the vaccine. Uh, it's more important than your fantasy football or the results of the sports team that you care about. It's more important than the house you live in. It's more important than the clothes that you wear. It's more important than the car that you drive. It's more important than the stuff that you have. We have not been called 
or created for any of these things. We have been created for a loving, life-filled relationship with Jesus, a wholehearted, whole-minded, whole-souledness relationship with Jesus. This is why he's created us, to enjoy, to glorify him and to enjoy him forever. Um, and and um, the beautiful thing is this is also where we, where we will experience life to the fullest. It's not about us. It's about God. But he, in his kindness, has, 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 has created us in such a way that when we fix our eyes on him, when we focus on him, when we, when we lean into him, we are fully and completely satisfied because it is only he who can do that. It's only he who can satisfy us. It's when we love God with everything. That's where we will find our satisfaction. Are you looking for your satisfaction in one of these other things I've mentioned? In your investments, in your financial situation, in your, in your house, in your DIY, in the car that you drive, in the clothes that you wear? Stop it. Look for it in Jesus. Here is my call to action today. Stop wasting your life. Stop wasting your energy. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your money. Stop wasting your emotional capacity, your brain space. Stop wasting your life on things that do not matter, but spend them on the one who does. Give them to Jesus. Pour your heart, devotion, and attention, and affection, not to your sports team, not to your car, not to your Alan Gray investment. Pour them out to Jesus. He is the only one that is holy uh, and completely worthy and worth it. He is the one who is worth all of our heart's desire and devotion and energy. Start spending your life, your time, your money, your, your energy, your emotional capacity on the, uh, on the person of Jesus. It is so worth it. And, and, and we will live life to the full. We will live life how he intended it. In fact, we will be satisfied. We will find the satisfaction that we're looking for in all these other things. And we'll find such greater satisfaction than what, than what we're even looking for. That is a that is a, 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 um, a money-back guarantee. No questions asked, money-back guarantee. I guarantee you when we, start, when we stop um, spending all our th uh, energies and, and, and time and money on all these unimportant things and start spending them on Jesus, when we love Him with our whole heart, our whole soul and our whole mind, when we live to glorify and enjoy Him uh, forever, we will find life and life to the fullest. James 4 verse 7 to 8 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. There's going to be a moment after we close and I really want to encourage you to uh, pray together but also spend some time together and, uh, uh, and share with someone an area in which you can submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, draw near to God, an area in which you can do that. Share a practical way in which you would like to glorify God and subsequently enjoy Him this week. Share a way in which you can love God wholeheartedly and whole-mindedly and whole-souledly. I don't know about that phrase, but let's go with it. Um, it's really been a wonderful privilege to share with you today. And I, and I trust that, that Jesus um, would, would have met with you. In fact, let me pray. God, I, I just pray your richest blessing over everyone who has heard your word today, who is engaged with your Bible, engaged with your word, engaged with your preach word. God, we pray that you would come and meet with them in a significant way. We need you, Jesus. Pray that your Holy Spirit, after this moment, would continue to work, continue to stir, continue to move among us. The work that you've begun, the convictions that you've started, the things that you've stirred in our hearts, continue to do that, Father. God, may our hearts lean into you this week, more than ever before, Jesus. May we, may we, may we love you wholeheartedly, God. Come and help us to put off the things that are not of you. Come and help us to spend our, our energies, not on our sports team, not on not on the latest technology, not on anything but you, God. And we know from that place will come such riches, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come and meet with us this week. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and your families this week. 
God bless.